Chris Alexander. He's the former Deputy Director for Eastern Europe in Canada's Foreign Ministry and joins us now live from Nairobi. Welcome to the programme. Now, lots of guests uh, that we've had on this programme have said that they see uh, early February or after the, the Olympic Games in Beijing as a possible start date for President Putin to launch some sort of... Uh, military action in Ukraine. The Games have just uh, started right now, the Olympic, the, the opening ceremony. My question is, is this the calm before the storm, Chris? I think it's very likely that it is. Um, I've heard uh, February 20th mentioned as a possible start date. That would be just at the end of the Games. Others are saying uh, February 10th, which is in only a few days. Uh, the assessments from defense analysts, from NATO, from lots of national military sources seem to be that the capabilities are there. Uh, and my view uh, as, a, as a political analyst and a former politician myself who spent a lot of time in Russia is that uh, President Putin has this intention. He is the one who uh, has declared very publicly that he doesn't think uh, Ukraine should exist as an independent country. And when he does cross the border with his troops, and I expect he will, this is going to be a, a, a very different situation from the one we see today, a very dangerous situation for Europe and the world, really the first interstate conflict on a large scale in Europe since 1945. And is diplomacy getting anywhere, given that uh, start date that, that is looming? I don't think it is. Uh, it's good that people are talking. But let's be honest, the Russian demands that were put forward were not realistic. Uh, they knew in advance what responses they would be getting from NATO and the United States. So there's a certain amount of shadow boxing going on here. The real question is, um, has deterrence started to work? Mm -hmm. uh, NATO countries, not NATO, the alliance, are beefing up Ukraine's defenses. Military cooperation is accelerating. Uh, NATO is, is is reinforcing its own defenses to make sure that any conflict in Ukraine doesn't spill over in, into NATO countries. Is this changing the calculus on Putin's side? I'm afraid my view today is no, it's not. But uh, I think Putin is also miscalculating. If he invades Ukraine, he's going to be fighting a very motivated population over a vast territory. Uh, and we've seen what this has happened, what, what, when Russia has bit off more than it can chew in the past, what has happened? Uh, the invasion of Afghanistan in 1979 was, a, was, a, was an absolute disaster. Uh, and this would be as well for Russia if Putin makes the move. And right now we're seeing uh, the coming together of uh, the Russian and Chinese presidents. Uh, how important is that in your eyes? Well, I think it's inevitable. Both are dictators. Um, they do not like the idea of democracies banding together uh, to call them out for their behavior. Uh, they know that a stronger NATO, including eventually countries like Ukraine, uh, is, is a real bulwark against their plans. Um, and so uh, on the eve of these games, I think it's inevitable that they would be allies of convenience. But there's a lot of deeper suspicion and hostility between Moscow and Beijing that um, isn't going to be overcome even in these circumstances. That's an interesting term, allies of uh, convenience. Thank you so much, Chris Alexander, live uh, from Nairobi for us. Appreciate your analysis and time.